Hey there, fellow coders. So today we are going to add pictures to our user configuration. So what we're going to do is we are going to attach the picture, show an image of the picture that they were going to upload, and then we're going to upload it to Firebase Storage, make a reference to it in the database, and then show it on our main screen with each user that is not me. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an email of Taylor, or actually we're going to name it dogs at taylor.com dog, 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 dog. And then we're going to do choose a file and it's going to be of my, you guessed it, my dogs. So we're going to create the account. Now we're not going to show all the users or the logged in user and their profile picture. So I'm going to create another user just so we can show on the screen what it looks like. So we're just going to make a bunch of garbage, a bunch of garbage, a bunch of garbage and a bunch of garbage. And we're going to choose another file, and it's going to be my YouTube thumbnail. We're going to go back to create account. Now, if we go back to the home screen, we should see the user's name, dog, dog, with their cute little pictures. So dog and dog. Pretty simple and pretty simple to implement. All we're going to need to do is put it in the storage, pull it out whenever we get to this page. Not going to be too difficult. So, as always with all my videos, I'm going to have the Git repo with the first video downloaded. So, if you haven't watched the first video on this, you don't need to. What we're going to do is we're going to go to a terminal. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to remove my test directory that I was running from. We're going to clear, and then I'm going to do git clone that repository. We're going to cd into the repository. We're going to do git checkout video1. Sorry, it's capital V. Now we're going to do actually npm install. Whenever that's getting squared away, this is going to be a fairly simple. We're going to add a couple of components. We're going to figure out how to upload to database store or file storage for um, Firebase. And we're going to figure out how to display that image both whenever we click it and on the screen whenever we are showing it in the main screen. So what you're going to do is open up your IDE of choice. Mine is WebStorm. Wait for that to load up. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into the our containers and components. So we're going to need to make two components in one container, and we need to mess with user actions. So let's go ahead and open up create account and user actions. We're going to need those later. We're also going to need Firebase. We'll go ahead and do Firebase now. So that way, if you are coding along with me, input your own configs. It's very useful to be able to see the data that you're messing with in the Firebase console. So please input your own configs. I can see what pictures you upload if that makes a difference. So what we're going to first do is we're going to export const storage is equal to firebase.storage.ref. So we're getting a reference to the storage of Firebase. Nothing's, you know, too terribly difficult about that. We're going to need this later whenever we implement the action. So the first thing we're going to need to do in create account is we want to make a new field. So we're going to make a new field. We're going to copy the field above it. For this one, we're going to make it named picture. The component is not going to be input field. And the reason is, is because an input field requires a little nuance to it just with the way that input fields work in HTML and setting their value. I'll show you that in a minute. So our label is going to be, you know, picture. Validation validated, we're gonna make it required or yeah, you know, we're gonna add the acquired attribute and we're gonna make it required equals true. And we're not gonna put the type on it. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna make a new input form field basically. So we're going to name it file field. See up here we need an input field. We're going to name that file field. So I'm going to do, it's going to be a class case component or a class based component. So we're going to import react and component from react. And then we're going to do class file field extends, not export, extends component. 
So the reason it's throwing this error is because I don't believe that it's picked up my um, my node modules. Don't worry about this. It should be fixed either momentarily or we'll just deal with it the whole time. It seems that I have a typo in my name, so I'm going to go ahead and rename it to file field with not a capital I. And then we're going to export default file field. And as always, we're going to have a render. And then we're going to return, for now, a div with hello in it. Just to get it on the screen and make sure we've got what we've got. So we've rendered it on the screen. I'm going to make a build con or a run configuration really quickly. Run npm, npm run start. And we'll play it. So this is the old one. This is what our end goal is. And as always, we forgot to actually input the component here. So we'll do file field. Make sure to import it. Ooh. Make sure to import it yourself. Uh, WebStorm takes care of it for me. But there we go. Now let's go to create account. And we can see our hello. Now that we can see our hello, the first thing that we're going to want to do is render just, you know, a basic form. And that's going to say, you know, like here, input the picture or whatever. So we're going to say we're going to have an, a big div, which is going to take in all of our components we're not really gonna, or all of our other divs, and we're not really going to worry about it. We'll say div class name is form group, and it's going to be a row. Here is just going to be a bunch of bootstrap. Feel free to, you know, speed this up if you ever so choose. We're going to have a label with a class name of column small three, column form label. And the text inside is going to be string interpolated. So we're going to do that in just a second. We're going to close that tag. And then we're going to get the label off of the props. So we're going to deconstruct that because we're going to need more off the props. So we're going to say const label is equal to this dot props. And we're going to say label. And next up, we're going to want to do a star if it's required. And we've made it required. So we're going to say required. And if it is required, we're going to want to put a star. Otherwise, we're going to want to put an empty string. Now this required is going to come off of props as well. So that should be looking good. We've got our label. And now we're going to put in our little input field. So we're going to do call small 9. And then we're going to do input type is equal to file. And the class name is going to be form control. Just to make it look good. So now we're going to refresh our Google Chrome. And as you can see, we have choose file, no file chosen. Next up, we're going to actually want to do something with that input. So with Redux form, you have access to something called input, which just handles all this for you kind of, you know, magically. So we're going to just put this on our input. We're going to do dot, 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 input. And that should be it. Now that we have that input, let's refresh. Let's click choose file, and I'll show you what I meant earlier where you get the issue. So if I upload this, we're going to do an inspect. And as you can see, we have five console errors. You're not supposed to set the value of a file type input. That's what Redux form does on default. It has, it has a value attribute on this input. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete it. So we're going to do delete input dot value. Now if we refresh the page, we choose a file, we can see that the error is gone. That's why we had to make a different component because you don't want to delete input dot value unless it's a, for, or a file type input. Now that we've done that, next what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to get that picture out of there so we can display it. So we're going to add some line breaks here in front of type, class name, and input. And then we're going to add an on change. And this on change is going to take an event. And then we're going to call this dot display picture, which we haven't made yet, of course. We're going to create the method of display picture. 
And we're going to need a state for this because we're going to want to set the state for the picture in the picture URL. The URL is going to be used as the source to display it. And the picture itself is going to be used to upload it. And we're going to want to do that instead of connecting it to the global store because the whole application doesn't need this picture. We're going to be referencing this picture with a URL anyway. So what we're going to do is we're just going to show the URL and the picture localized to this component. So with any state, we're going to need a constructor. It takes in, not props, it takes in state. And we need a super of state just because that's what you need. And this dot state is equal to picture is going to be null. And then we're going to have picture URL, which is also going to be null because you aren't going to start with a picture. So in display picture, what we're going to want to get is we're going to say let reader equal new file reader. And then let file equal to event.target.files sub zero. So we're getting the first file that is uploaded, which you can, you know, command click or control click and select multiple files, but we don't want to support that. So we're just going to want to get the first one. And this is going to read the file for us. So we're going to say reader.onloadend. And this is going to be a function. So whenever the file is done loading, what are we going to do? We're going to want to this.setState. And then we're going to want to make the picture the actual file. And the picture URL is going to equal uh, reader.result. So we're going to want to get the result of reading the file. And I'm sorry, it's not RDR, it is reader. And then to actually, you know, load it, we're going to do reader.read as data URL. And then we're going to read that file. And then we're going to format everything. So what we've done is we've read the file, we've gotten the file, and what this is all read file is going to do is just read it as a URL so we can display it. So we have read data as URL, and then we're going to set the state with the picture and the picture URL. So right now we're going to actually want to display the picture, but first we're going to make sure this is showing up on the screen. Here it is, no file chosen. We should be good. Now let's choose a file to make sure we're not getting any issues. No console issues. So we're going to reload that. And we're going to make a new component to actually display the picture. So we're going to do preview picture as a new component. So we're going to do new JavaScript file, preview picture. And this is going to be a normal component or a display component. We're not going to need to be able to set a state and we're not going to be able to need a class based component. So we're just going to import react from react and we're going to do const preview picture is equal to props because we are going to need props in this one. And then we're going to do const picture URL because that's what we're going to need to display off of props. So this picture URL is going to let us add to the image. So we're going to say image class name is equal to image fluid. What image fluid does is it'll just make it fill the container to the best of its ability. And we're going to add a margin to the bottom and a margin to the top. Nothing special. And then the source is going to be picture URL. And then we're going to close our tags. And we should obviously return this. I'm a, just a doofus. Okay. So we want to also export preview picture. And we're going to export it as a default. It seems that we've missed. Nope, we sure haven't. So we have got the preview picture. So we're going to want to call preview picture inside of our file field. So we're going to say preview picture. And the picture URL is going to be this.state.pictureurl. Nothing special there either. So let's reload our Google Chrome, make sure, and let's try adding a file. There it is. Came up just fine. As you can tell, it's in the confines of this input. We're going to make it stretch out the whole way just so we can make it a little bigger. I seem to have messed up on my CSS here, so let's see what we've done. We've put this preview picture inside our form group row. Let's put it outside of it, see if that'll make it a little bigger. Ooh, bad scaling there. That's because we're in our form group. So we don't want to add that either. We're going to want to put it one more div down just to make sure that this is right for real this time. That's much better. That's a good aspect ratio. It's not stretched and it's big enough to see. 
So now that we've got this, we're gonna to wanna to actually upload that picture to Firebase. So we're gonna to wanna to do that in our action. So as always with Redux form, we're gonna have the name picture on the data that we send to create account. So we're gonna to wanna to go to create account. And on this data, we're gonna have a picture. And now when the user is not equal to null, we're gonna to want to push the picture in and then take that picture URL and save it with our first name and last name. So what we're first gonna to wanna to do, so if our user's not equal to null, is do storage, which we haven't imported, so import it if you haven't. I just use, you know, WebStorm to do it. So we're gonna say profile slash. Actually, we're gonna to need to make these back ticks, and you'll see why in a moment. Because we need a unique identifier for all pictures. Now with Firebase, it is up to us to display or to generate a unique identifier. Now, what I'm gonna do is not necessarily unique. It's gonna be pretty unique for our purposes. If you are putting this into production or you are doing something that has a lot of volume, use something more unique like a GUID generator or something. But for us, we're just gonna make a new date time and get the milliseconds off of it. So if someone uploads into two of the same millisecond, which is technically possible, you won't want to use this, but we're going to want to do a new date and we just want to get the time from that. So that's all it's going to do. So it's going to go in the folder of profile and then we're going to get the time off of that, which is, you know, pretty reasonable in my opinion. And then we're going to want to dot put picture sub zero. So it's going to upload a list or an array of files and we're just going to get the first one. So then we're gonna do a dot then statement because that returns a promise. And we've talked about promises before where all we're saying is whenever this is done, we're gonna get something back. And for us, it's gonna be some metadata about the picture we just uploaded, like the URL we're gonna need. So we're gonna say we want to add the picture and it's going to have, I'm sorry, this dot then actually has a, an argument it is gonna bring us back a snapshot of whatever that was. So we're gonna do snapshot dot metadata dot download URLs sub zero. Again, remember I said that this could handle multiple URLs. So we're just gonna get the first one because we only uploaded one picture. Now, that should be all we need to do. We're gonna to go to Google Chrome, see if this works. We're gonna enter an email. And then we're going to add, we'll just add this new YouTube thumbnail. We'll create account. Interesting. We didn't get any errors. No console errors. Let's go to Firebase and make sure that it uploaded. So Firebase console. Again, as I've reiterated always, you should use your own config files so you can go check this yourself. We're going to do a cool message board because that's the one I decided to use. We'll go to storage. This is from earlier. This is our new file. So I didn't put it in a different folder. I just put it in, you know, a new one. So we can actually delete those. These are the ones I was messing with earlier. So we'll delete this folder. You shouldn't have that, I will. But this is our new file. As you can see, it's message board. And then we'll go to database. And the person is just gonna be. But as you can see, all the users have the picture URL in it. So we're gonna go ahead and delete users. So we can have all fresh. What we're gonna to need to do next is go to WebStorm and we're gonna to wanna to display that picture. So in our list users, we're gonna to wanna to display the picture. Now we made a pretty reusable component earlier, don't you think? How about that preview picture? The beauty of reusable components, the power of React. So we're gonna send a picture URL. What is it gonna be? We saved it on the database. All it is is user.picture. Now we should see the picture's picture, or the user's picture, the picture's picture. We should see the user's picture. So we're gonna go back to our message board. We're gonna create two accounts because we're gonna log in as who we are and we're not gonna show their account. So we'll do a random email dot at whatever.com, whatever, whatever, whatever. We are going to upload the YouTube thumbnail because that one's not, in, actually we're gonna upload my cute dogs because that one's really cool. Look at those cute little dogs. We're gonna create the account and we're gonna create a new account And then we're not gonna use my super cool dogs. We're just using a YouTube thumbnail. We're gonna create an account. 
And then we're going to go to the home page. And look at that. Cute little dogs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to release a super, super duper short video soon about how to deploy this application to Firebase or Heroku. It's pretty easy to do, so I don't expect too many people to watch it. But if you don't know how to and you've been wondering how, it'll be super duper easy. Deploying with Firebase and Heroku are both super simple. That's what they do. So if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. I make pretty normal content about once every week or so. If you have some ideas on what you want to see next, please let me know. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, post them in the comments. I would love to help you out. Put the code on GitHub. I'll make a pull request to you and fix your code. Tell you why, you know, what's wrong with it. And if you have any suggestions about my code, please feel free to add or tell me. I would love to learn. And, and that's it. So thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. Have a wonderful, wonderful life.